All right, guys, so now that we've got those license presets installed, let's have a quick start in Redshift and just see how this works. So first of all, what we're going to do is create uh, some assets in this scene. So we can come in here and I can create this base cylinder set. Now make sure you switch over to Redshift, make sure you're in that one. And we can double click this guy here and it will ask you if Redshift is not loaded the first time to load Redshift. So just wait for Redshift to load. It will always load up here in this top bar to check that that's loaded correctly. Make sure the menu has appeared. Once that has just remake that asset and we can zoom back a little bit and see that there. Now I just like to put anti-aliasing on there. And I also like in the cameras to make the clipping planes uh, 0 0.9 to 5,000. That works a bit better on the camera. Now down here, we can zoom to the front, which means the X axis is going that way. Zoom down a little bit and we've got a whole bunch of assets down here. Now we've got Natalie, so we can just double click on her and create her in the scene. And now we've got something to render. So to have a look first at the IBLs, uh, the HDR, IBLs are called HDR or images or also sky domes. So the HDR IBL sky dome browser, I call it. Now, if we just bring an uh, IBL here, just double click to bring that into the scene. I will be changing these icons too, to make it clearer that, uh, you know, this has been kindly donated from HDR Skies. And down here, we've got HDR Labs. So you'll see the icons on it in a future update. But for now, there we go. And we've got our scene. Now to render in Redshift, we just open up the render view and uh, we can just hit render here to see what that looks like. Now, once that renders, there's a couple of things to know in Redshift. And if we are to come up here to the settings, that's Shift 5 on my hotkeys, come down into Redshift. There's a couple of presets I like in Redshift to make. Make sure your GI is on for both of those. Brute Force is a good no-brainer. It's in the GI tab. And then in Output, I just like to put that down to 256. It's fine. That's plenty. So close that. Now we've got some bounce light in the scene and we've got our renderer going. Now, to get your head around some of these controls, we can hit these buttons to rotate around. Hold shift to make that go faster. Hold control to make it go slower. That will go in smaller increments. Hold alt to reset and you've got those covered. These guys will brighten the IBL so you can see that there. At the moment it is a percentage so it will sort of go out a little bit and give you lots of decimal places. It's it's adding 10% of the current value but I might switch that over in a future release. Alt I will reset that and you can go down darker as well there. So that's quite cool that you got those settings. If you don't want that IBL to appear, uh, you can take that on and off. Now, if we double click on these guys, we can now just quickly look through those IBLs. That's nice if you can take that off. All your settings will be remembered. So if we had it like at double intensities or, you know, we're going very bright at five intensity, every time we double click one of these guys, it is using these settings on the import, which is great. So to reset that, alt click down. Now that's it for the IBLs for now. There is information here if you want to find out um, how to get uh, the high res versions. These are 2K, which is quite small for IBLs. They're great for lighting, but not so great for the backgrounds that will be blurry. So if you want to upgrade, you can see the details in there um, and go to the creator's site in this case, HDR Skies. And in the case of uh, Christian site, that's HDR Labs there. So let's now have a look at the light presets. So we can come in here and open this little guy. And the light presets are pretty cool. If we just double click those, zoom back a bit, we can see how each time we double click one of these guys, the light setups will change for that there. Now, if we're rendering uh, in Redshift, that will be changing in our renderer. And we'll just come in and zoom up a little bit. And with these light presets, I do like to just right click and make that 1080 by 1080. In Redshift, that will render a little bit bigger here, but we can just zoom back a bit there in the renderer, something like that. And uh, now we can just double click and see what these look like with Nat there. As you can see, all those lights are changing. If we've got the colored ones there, we've got these different ones here, lots of different styles of rendering nice and quickly. Now, if we come over here to our assets, one thing to take note of is if these guys are actually tagged as background. So all these guys here are all backgrounds. That's a background that we've imported down here. Now, if we double click this, we've got replaced by type. So what it means is anything that's been tagged as a background, in this case, our, our cylinder base, we will replace it. So that means that this will be deleted from the scene and we double click and create our psych there. So that's bringing in the background psych and we can just rearrange that camera. You can see what that looks like here and we can just zoom up and place her a little bit better. Um, there and we're doing that. Now that also goes for characters. So these guys here are hero models. So uh, if we were to double click on our little turtle here, 
that will bring him in and replace everything, all the other hero models in that case, Nat. So if we now click on Nat, it's going to delete the turtle from the scene or the tortoise and bring in Nat again. Okay, same with our little Batman guy here. And you can bring up some details. This one's by Mauricio Garcia. And you can see his website there and some sort of information about that and the options on that. So he's been kind enough to release this as a royalty free model, even though we're taking a little bit of liberties with DC. Thanks to DC too for the Batman character. So double click on these guys and we can get different assets up. So we'll just move back to Nat. And also I just thought I'd show you if we scroll down here, all these guys here are is the the sort of the picks, my picks from up here and a little a couple of little tweaks. So just tweaking the light setup so that it really suits this model. Most of these are just duplicated light setups, but I like to just show you that different light setups work differently on different models. So these are like the picks for Natalie there that you can see and, and go through and, and see what those light setups are and how they've been set up. So there's obviously a lot more options on these interfaces and I'll go through that in a lot more depth, but that should get you up and started at least on the browsers and how they work.